so I was asked on um, my last upload to do um, a video about mediums. Um, I have a lot of different kinds of mediums that I use, but most of them are, are derivatives of, of something different, of, of some like uh, different types of linseed oil, etc. So let's talk a little bit about what mediums I use. It, it's a quick video to tell you about that and we'll just go from there. So let's start off with this. It's a medium that probably a good bit of the time I'm using this. This is Bob Ross liquid white. Uh, people give it to me for Christmas and I like it so I use it. So I've never actually made that that medium myself. Make sure you stir it well. Make sure you keep the lid on it. Um, I recommend the, buying the larger can, which is what I have, um, and and going from there. Uh, if you don't know how to apply it, let me quickly cover that. You kind of you brush on a thin coat, kind of scrub it around, and then if you touch your fingers like this to it and you pick them up, you should be able to see your fingerprints. If, you, if it's all white, that's way too much. You should be able to see your fingerprints. And if you do like that and you don't see your fingerprints or they're very faint, that's too little. So it's an easy way to do that and, and check that. Uh, if you'd like to see a live demo of that, just drop me a comment in the comment section and, and I'll be glad to, to show you that. Uh, the next thing I use is this. This is my version of what Bob Ross calls liquid clear. Now I've also got liquid clear here somewhere on the table. Um, I like this better though and let me tell you why. I don't have anything against Bob Ross liquid clear. Matter of fact it's it's highly recommended. It's good stuff. Uh, but if you look here in this bottle, if you were to, if you were looking at Bob Bob Ross liquid clear in a bottle like this, it would be very it'd be running more like um, syrup than this. So this is one part linseed oil and three parts odorless mineral spirits. I mix this myself. It's very fast to mix. I mix it in two ounce cups so I have like a two ounce cup of just regular linseed oil um, and then three cup and then three of those two ounce cups of, of odorless mineral spirits will just about fill this jar up. Actually if I do two cups of linseed oil and six cups of that of uh, mineral spirits then I'll, that'll fill this bottle. This bottle works out really good for me. It's a dishwash, dish soap bottle. I just use it to squeeze them out on a plate and go for it. So it's very easy to use. Um, also on my table, I have this. Now, I really, really like these apothecary jars. You can buy them at Michael's or you can buy them like at a, an antique mall. Mine are from an antique mall, actually. Although I do have some over there that are not. Um, one of those bottles I have odorless mineral spirits in. It's a big bottle. I have another one with alcohol in it for like when I'm doing watercolors. I have uh, some bigger bottles with uh, cold pressed linseed oil, and this is just regular linseed oil. I use this mostly for signatures, and I will use it. Uh, the difference between that and this, of course, is this has linseed oil in it, but it's uh, one part, one part to three parts. So it's 25% linseed oil and the rest is, is uh, mineral spirits. Now, because of that, the, that medium will dry really fast. So if I use that and I'm doing an underpainting and I paint this underpainting with that and burnt umber, by the next morning it's dry, it's ready to go. Uh, if I did that with linseed oil, it would not be dry. It would not be dry. Um, linseed oil just takes longer to, to dry. The other thing about this is if you kind of mix this in with your oils and your painting, uh, you could end up with, with seeing some shiny areas and some flat areas based, you know, because of this. So linseed oil, of course, will, you know, over time will yellow some. I don't have that happening so much with this, although realize realize I've only been painting for like right it'll be four years on May the sixth, so my paintings don't really have haven't really had a time to get all that old. Uh, let me show you some other stuff I got here. Um, 
This stuff, I used it very sparingly. This is Grombacher Oil Painting Medium Number 1. It's about 25 years old. I bought it at an antique mall. Still works really good, but you better ventilate super good when you use this stuff or it will run you right the heck out of the house. So that's really good though for, for thin mediums. This is a uh, Liquin Original. I use Liquin Original if I'm painting something, let's say like a uh, sky uh, that I'm gonna have to let dry. Let's say I'm spending like a lot of time on a sky because I'm building a really stormy sky. So it's not really, it could be wet on wet well, usually it is wet on wet, but I will mix liquid in with my paint and, and it will cause it to become tacky much quicker than, than if it did not, if it was not, if I didn't use this at all. So, you know, if I, I can usually apply a sky, let it sit for like two hours and come back with this liquid. I come, come back um, later, like a couple hours later and, and it's tacky. So I can go ahead and start painting over it if I'm trying to to layer colors over colors. And, and when you're doing clouds and stuff like that, sometimes it's, if you're really focusing on that, like a, a red horizon and a big bunch of purple storm cloud stuff, this, this works really good for that. So nothing fancy about it. You can buy it at the store. This is my small bottle of, of uh, cold pressed linseed oil. Um, it improves the flow of your paint. It's a little little bit slower to dry than uh, regular linseed oil, but it's a little more pure. So it's not heated when it's made. Now this stuff is not cheap, um, but I bought mine on sale. I buy almost everything on sale. So you know, normally it's 20 bucks at Hobby Lobby. The day I bought it, it was 4.99. So I don't use it very much. I don't use it a lot. Other mediums, matte gel. I do use matte gel, and, and, and let me tell you what I use it for, though. Um, when I'm putting, like, a, if I have something that's taped off, like a moon, and, uh, you know, I'm going to paint that with acrylic or whatever, and I'm going to gesso it or whatever, and I want to protect that area. Lots of times you see Bob Ross do stuff like that with tape, and then you go and do it, and, and you got all these rough edges, or the paint seeped in around the, the edge. You can, you can cheat up with, or like the ovals that he does. If you take this, you put the oval on there, and then take this and paint it around the edges, it won't create a visible layer around the edge of your painting, but it will keep your oil paint from sliding underneath your tape or underneath your uh, shelf paper. So it'll keep your lines very crisp and very nice. So again, this is Liquitex Professional Matte Gel. Good stuff. Good stuff. I actually learned this from a Bob Ross CRI. This is a flow medium that I use for my acrylics um, when I'm using those. It's, it's for slow drying. So if I'm trying to slow down an acrylic, I don't want it to dry because I'm trying to blend it or if I'm using it to, uh, to do some flow control. And then I uh, also have this glazing medium. So I probably have some other kinds of mediums around here that, that I don't use very often sitting over there. I'm just kind of looking over on my other shelf. But I think I've got everything that over here that I have over there. I've got uh, I have some alcohol over there for water, but that's about it. So I think that kind of covers it for mediums. Um, if you would like to see a demo of like actually mixing those mediums with paint and, and how they respond on the canvas, I'll be glad to do that. Um, I'm more interested in what you would like to see um, because I'm glad to explain anything that I know and tell you the things that I don't know. So. Uh, hope you guys will leave a like and a subscribe and we'll keep cranking out the content. Have a great day.